Hi everyone, my name is Beth. I'm a patron services librarian at the Frank L. Weinberg Library in Mequon, and I am here to give you an overview of smart speakers. So I'm going to talk about Alexa, Google, and Siri, um, how they work, what they are, what it means to be smart, and then I'll talk about some of the good stuff and some of the bad stuff about them. Um, I should, of course, put in a caveat here that this presentation is valid as of today, which is, I think, March 27th? Yes, March 27th, 2020. Um, but that doesn't mean it'll be valid tomorrow. It doesn't mean it'll be valid next week or next month or next year. This is new technology and it's changing really, really fast. So consider when you're watching it um, and do your own research to make sure that everything that I've said is still accurate before you make any real decisions about whether or not to get a smart speaker. Now, first question I should answer is what is a smart speaker? So it's a speaker, which means that it can play music, play audio for you, um, but it basically has a brain. It has an artificial intelligence or AI, and this is a software that allows it to function without an actual human intervention. So it can answer questions, it can play you music, it can do things based on what you've said to it without another person on the other end listening and telling it what to do. Now there is some human oversight on the back end, but that human oversight comes after. So if you say to Siri, for example, hey, um, can you tell me what the weather is? Siri will try to answer your question. And then later on, an engineer at Apple is going to look at that transaction and say, oh, Siri answered the question right, so she's working properly, or hmm, she didn't do that very well, we better fix it. Um, and that is what makes them smart and unique. Now, if you're considering getting a smart speaker, you need to think about setup. So you will need a power outlet or a surge protector. Um, they do have to be plugged in directly. They're not battery operated. You need Wi-Fi internet. It's not enough just to have internet. You have to have a Wi-Fi router also. Um, because unfortunately, none of the smart speakers on the market have a direct hookup. You can't plug them into a modem. And then you have to have a smartphone or tablet because all smart speakers are set up using an app on your device. Um, you can't set them up on a computer. You can't set them up manually. You have to have a smartphone or a tablet. So think about that um, as you go into this. So now let's talk a little bit about how smart speakers work. So um, they are equipped with a microphone to hear you with and then they have at least one speaker to respond through. Um, some of them do come with more than one speaker, just improves the audio quality, it doesn't really matter. They're all activated by a wake word, which is usually the name of the AI, like Alexa, Google, or Siri. And they are always listening for their wake word. When they hear the wake word, they will sort of wake up, that's why it's called a wake word, and then they will record what you're saying for the next several seconds, usually five to ten seconds. And then that recording gets sent to a central hub where the software processes it, figures out what it thinks you said, and then tries to respond appropriately. Now, whenever the device is listening to you, it'll light up. So the light might be on the top, on the side, on the front, but somewhere you'll see a light to say, yep, I'm listening and I'm recording and it will also eventually try to respond. You can physically mute them. Um, all of them come with physical mute buttons where when you push it, it will tell them to stop listening for their wake word, um, and then they won't respond to you until you reactivate them, which is, you know, nice if you're concerned about them listening all the time, but it makes them a little less convenient because you can't just ask them questions. And then of course their features are not limited just to what comes pre-installed. Specialized apps can do more and you can download and install those apps um, on each of these devices to get them to order you a pizza or tell you what's on the radio and things like that. Um, what apps are available does vary by device and I will talk more about that um, later on. So now let's talk about the big three names in smart speakers. So there's Amazon, which makes a device called the Echo, and their AI is named Alexa. There's Google, who makes the Google Home, and their AI is called the Google Assistant. And then Apple, who makes the HomePod with the AI Siri. 
Um, Amazon's Echo comes in four different versions, all of which are activated by the AI named Alexa. There's the Echo Dot, Echo, and Echo Plus, which are just speakers, and um, they're different tiers just reflect their audio qualities. So the dot has the worst quality, the plus has the best. Then they also have the Echo Show, which actually has a screen. So you can watch videos, you can show picture slideshows, um, as well as do all of the various things that a smart speaker can do. They're set up in the Alexa app on your phone or tablet. So you would need to download the Alexa app. And then you sign in with your Amazon account. So you do have to have an Amazon account to use them. You can install special apps called Skills on your, your Amazon Echo using the Alexa app. And by default, anytime you ask Alexa a question, she records it and then saves that recording under your name at Amazon's headquarters. So keep that in mind. You can opt out and tell them to stop recording your questions and archiving them. You can tell them to stop letting people listen to them. Um, which I'll talk about in detail in a second, but you have to go in and actually manually do that. It won't do that on its own. Next up is Google, which has an AI called the Google Assistant, and that is installed on the Google Home devices. Um, just like Amazon, they have a mini, a home, and a max, which have good, better, and best audio qualities. And then they have a Nest Hub for both audio and video. You set the Google Home up in the Google Home app on your phone or tablet, and you log in with your Google account. So you have to have a Gmail address to use it. And then you can install special apps through the Google Home app. And just like Amazon, they do record and archive the questions that you ask under your name. And just like Amazon, you can go in and opt out and say, stop it. Um, but by default, they just get saved right in there. Then there's Apple, who has an AI called Siri and a device called the Apple HomePod. Now, Apple is different in that it is set up with an app called iCloud, which is only available on an iPhone or iPad. So if you don't have an iPhone or iPad, you can't use the HomePod. It's linked to your Apple ID, which you would use to do things like download apps, listen to music, things like that. And then you actually don't install the apps directly on the Apple HomePod. Instead, you would install them on your iPhone or iPad, and then you would tell them through the iCloud to do something on the HomePod. So if you had a music app on your iPhone, you could say, play the music through the HomePod, for example. And then Apple transcribes your questions um, through an automatic transcription service, but it doesn't record them. And it does it anonymously. So nobody knows that it was you who asked Siri what the weather was six times yesterday. Um, and like Amazon, like Google, you can go in and say, don't even do that. Don't transcribe me. Don't, don't save my recordings at all. Just delete them. So that's the overview. Now let's talk about the good stuff, the fun stuff. So smart speakers are speakers which means they can play music and audio for you. And that includes radios, radio stations. They can do specific stations if you know the call sign or the name, or they can do just a random genre. So if you say, play me some um, Halloween music, they'll find you a mix of spooky soundtrack stuff to play. They can also play music through dedicated apps. So if you have a um, account with a service like Spotify or Pandora or, or Amazon Music or Apple Music, something where music is accessible. You can install those as apps on an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, or you can install it onto your iPod or iPhone if you have an Apple HomePod, and then they will play that audio through the speaker for you. And if you're listening to something on your phone already, you can connect your phone to the speaker with Bluetooth, a wireless connection, and then um, it will play the audio through the speaker for you so you can hear it a little more loudly and a little more clearly. Now, um, smart speakers can also serve as digital assistants, so they can kind of be your robot girl Friday. They can set reminders um, and you can set them 
pretty much as far into the future as you want and say the day, the time, what you want to, what you want them to remind you of. And then at that day and at that time, they will wake up and say, Hey, don't forget, blah, 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 blah. You can set timers, alarms, multiple ones, um, as long as you want. You can have them compile to-do lists and shopping lists. If you have an Amazon Echo, you can even order your stuff from Amazon and then she'll tell you when it gets here. You can ask them questions with mixed success. They can answer basic stuff like how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon, but once you get into more abstract concepts or more complicated subjects, um, it's hard for them and they will sometimes say, I don't know how to answer that or I don't know what you said. Um, So, you know, give them some, some leeway there. They can also tell you about the weather today, tomorrow, a week from now. Um, and you can set them up to do routines, which would be where you train them to respond in a certain way based on something you say. So I have set up my Alexa, for example, where when I get up in the morning and say, good morning, she knows to tell me the weather about my commute. Um, and for example, I don't actually have her do this, but I could, um, to turn on the coffee maker in the kitchen. Now, how does she turn on the coffee maker? Well, smart speakers can also be smart home hubs, which means they can connect to and command multiple smart devices within your home. Now, a smart device is anything that can talk to a smart speaker, it can follow a routine, and it can be controlled with an app on your phone. There's all kinds of stuff that can do this. Light bulbs, light switches, appliances, alarms, thermostats, tons and tons and tons of stuff, and more every day. Um, and your smart speaker can bring them all together. So you can connect all of these devices to your smart speaker and say, Alexa, turn on X or Alexa, do this or Alexa, tell this to do that. So for example, if I have a smart coffee maker, I can say, Alexa, when I say good morning, turn on the coffee maker and turn on the light and do this and do that. And then she will control all of that for me. I don't have to individually set the coffee maker or talk to the coffee maker. Um, I can also control multiple smart devices in the same room. So if I have two lamps in my living room and they each have a smart light bulb in them, I can say, Alexa, turn on lamp one and just that lamp will turn on. Or I can say, Alexa, turn on the living room lights and both of the lamps will turn on. So there's a lot of options and a lot to think about if you never want to get off your couch again. (laughs) Now, keep in mind, not all smart devices are compatible with all speakers. Um, Most, eh, eh, yeah, most, most smart devices are made by third party manufacturers like Philips, Samsung, the usual sort of culprits you'd see if you're walking around Home Depot or Lowe's or Best Buy. Um, But some of them have been bought up by Google and Amazon. So like Google just bought a company called Nest, which made uh, smart thermostats. And now those thermostats are not compatible with Amazon products anymore because Google doesn't want the competition. Whereas Amazon has bought up a company called Ring that makes smart um, security cameras. And those are not compatible with Google necessarily anymore. Um, So depending on what features you want to have access to and what devices you already own or want to own in the future, you have to think about what speaker you want to get because it's going to depend. So all that being said, let's talk about some of the, the pitfalls of this technology. So there's a lot of anxiety surrounding smart speakers, how they work, what they do. Are they listening to me all the time? What are they doing with what they hear? And these are all very valid concerns. And so I wanted to address them um, and explain where they're coming from and and what you need to be concerned about. Um, So you have the information you need to make these decisions. So first of all, one big question is, what are Google, Amazon, and Apple doing with what you say. We know that they're listening all the time, right? They're listening for their wake word, but they're not recording all the time. They're only recording in five to 10 seconds increments after they hear their wake word, right? 
Now, Amazon and Google, by default, like we said, they store those recordings at their headquarters and they're assigned under your account information. So anyone who's looking at them knows that it was you who said these things. And then Apple stores transcripts of your requests, but not the audio. They say that they do this so that they can review these interactions and make sure the AI is working the way that it should. But of course, the question arises, are your recordings secure? Yes. I mean, the short answer is yes, right? Amazon and Google have very strong firewalls. They have very strong things in place to make sure that nobody could hack into their central location um, and listen to what you've been saying. But there's never any guarantee that that's the case. Now, Google and Amazon do hire outside people, just transcribers, essentially, to listen to and transcribe your recordings so that their engineers can then review them. If your recordings contain personal information, whether because you asked Amazon a question or you asked Google a question and included some personal information with it, or because Alexa thought she heard you say her name, woke up, recorded 10 seconds of you saying your credit card number and then powered back down, um, that transcriber is still going to hear it. They're still going to hear what you said. Um, and will they do anything with it? Probably not, but maybe. You can't know that. You really can't. So these are things to think about. The other thing to think about and honestly, the one that I think is a bigger concern is what are Google and Amazon doing or going to do with your recordings? So Amazon says nothing. They, says they're, they say they're just hanging on to them so that they can monitor and they can keep an eye on it and, and make sure that the software is working the way that it should. Google says something different. So the thing about tech companies nowadays is they make some money off of um, the sales of their technology, right? But most of the money they make is actually from advertising. They are collecting data about you whenever you visit their website and they're selling that data to advertisers in exchange for ad space. This is, this is their business model. This is just how it works. And Google says, we are willing to sell your data for ads. They're already doing it. They explicitly say they are already doing it. If you have a Google Home and you speak to it on the regular, you're gonna see ads on your Gmail account, on google.com, on various places that are controlled by Google based on the things you've said or the things that they've heard you say, whether you told them or not, right? Um, Amazon says they're not doing this yet, but they might start. And they also both might start actually playing ads to you over the smart speakers. So, you know, if I spend all, I spend a ton of time asking my Alexa for um, baking conversions, like how many cups are in a quart, things like that. If an Amazon engineer were to listen back to that data, they could say, oh, well, you know, she seems like she really likes to cook. And then they could go to taste at home and say, hey, the next time Beth Lamp in Milwaukee asks her Alexa about a baking thing, do you want us to play an ad from you about how she can subscribe to Taste at Home? And then I might have to listen to Taste at Home every time I wanna ask a question. So it's annoying, it's irritating, and it's, it, it might be something that makes you uncomfortable. Um, it's something to consider when you're thinking about this stuff. Um, are you okay with Amazon and Google doing whatever they're gonna do with your recordings and with that data. Um, again, you can opt out, but you can't necessarily opt out of everything. And it, you can't know what you're opting out of or into until it comes out later that this is what they've been doing because they don't make it clear up front. They just don't. So that's thing one. Thing two is your safety. Could someone use your smart speaker to spy on you? No except in one particular case. So again, smart speakers only record a few seconds of what you say and only after hearing their wake word, which would make it really tricky for a spy to get any actual useful information, right? If they can only hear you for 10 seconds at a time and only when you say the name of the AI, probably not gonna pick up very much um, of worth. But 
If they could change how the device operates, if they could rewrite the software, they could trick it into listening to you for longer, transcribing what you say, um, listening to you without lighting up so you don't know that they're listening, things like that. The only way they can rewrite the software is with an app. So installing an app on your Amazon Echo or your Google Home gives its creator permission to change how your speaker works, which in most cases is fine, right? In most cases, you want them to change it because you're asking them to add the feature that you want. But they're not always going to tell you what they're doing. And they may be doing something unsavory, like turning your speaker into a wiretap. So there's a, a company called SR Labs that makes it its its job basically to test these things. They take these technologies and they say, how can we break it? How can we make it something bad so that companies like Amazon and Google can then fix all of these loopholes and close these loopholes and prevent them from happening in the wild, in the real world. So SR Labs created an app that could be downloaded by Alexa and Google Home. And they said they were doing one thing. I think they said they were going to give you horoscopes. But what they were really doing was they were rewriting the software so that once you said the wake word, um, Alexa, for example, would wake up, answer you the way that she was supposed to. The light would go off, but she would continue listening and recording. And she would send a transcript of what you said to SR Labs, which they could then use for whatever. Now, Amazon and Google said they closed the loophole that made this possible, but it was possible, and this is not the first company that's figured out a way to do this. So if you really want to make sure that your Alexa and your Google Home are secure, don't download or install any outside apps, except ones recommended by like a smart device. If you buy a Philips light bulb and Philips says, install my app, you can probably trust them, but other people, you really don't know what they're going to do. So stay away from those. So what's the upshot? The upshot is smart speakers can be useful devices, right? They can play music, radio, audio. They can be a digital assistant and let you set reminders. I basically keep my brain inside my Alexa at this point. Like I don't know what I would do without her anymore. And they can control other smart devices in your home. But there's no guarantee your recordings are secure. There's no guarantee that some transcriber at Google or Amazon isn't going to take personal information about you and use it against you. Google is already selling ad space based on what you say, and Amazon says they won't, but there's nothing to stop them from doing it. And then installing apps might leave you vulnerable to spying. So what you need to do if you decide you want a smart speaker or don't is weigh the good against the bad. There is no right answer here. You know, if you're careful, if you opt out of the recordings, if you do this and that and the other, it could be a very nice and useful tool. Like I said, I use mine all the time. But, you know, you got to think about these things. It's, 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 it's something to think about. So that's my spiel. Um, again, my name is Beth. I wrote my full name, Elizabeth Lamp, but you can call me Beth. Um, I'm a patron services librarian at the Frank L. Library, Frank L. Weinberg Library in Mequon. It's a mouthful. Um, the best way to reach me is at my email address, which is my last name, L-A-M-P-P at F-L-W-L-I-B dot org. Um, I am happy to answer any questions you have about anything technology related, but especially about smart speakers. I love talking about this stuff. So please, please email me. Um, and then the link to the handout for this class is in the description of this video. So feel free to look at that. Feel free to download it, share it, whatever you want. Um, I do not need credit. You know, this is all about getting the word out there. So, um, do what you like, print it out, post it all over town. I don't mind. Um, and of course, if you, have other, like I said, if you have questions, if you need another copy of the handout, whatever, just email me. Okay. Thank you for your time. Um, stay safe and healthy and, um, I'll see you next time.